Hey! Welcome back, guys, to another edition of Thursday's Weekly Access Stream. My name is Sammy. I appreciate you guys joining me so much for our first stream of 2023. A very sexy way to start the new year. Yes, absolutely. Talk about it as we go along. So, um, basically, the idea of the stream today. Pretty much just talk about what 2022 was and what 2023 is going to look like. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I really like to me, 2023 is super exciting because of what it means to access games. But it also means like, man, the future could also be like so bright. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited for what's to come. Let's just jump into it. I don't really have like a good way to do this, by the way. Right. We're just going to play P.O. Fiore while we talk about it. I have this button here. It shows a video game and then we can talk about the video game. How about that? I hope that sounds good. The first game we're starting to talk about uh, is Variable Barricade. I I want to I want to express to y'all how big of a deal Variable Barricade was for me. As a as a rom com enjoyer, Jesus, do I fucking I, I I love some I love some rom com. I, you just love Habari? Who doesn't love Habari? Raise your hand if you don't love Habari. Are you kidding me? I think Taiga, uh, probably story-wise, was the best route. I think I have to, I, I, I think I, as much as I like Nayata, as much as I love having just the absolute, completely and wholeheartedly the dumbest love interest <laughs> that I have ever seen, and also, Nyatis route was pretty good, too. I think it was really good, actually. I don't know if anybody's ever, uh, like, I, I know there's a few people who've seen me play uh, Pups and Purrs Animal Hospital. You would think that a game like this would be, like, just kind of mindless to a degree. But let me tell you that this game was so much more fun than I ever expected. And it's actually one of my most, speaking of... Speaking of uh, voiced protagonists, to say that I think this is like the, to me in my head, like one of those games that can really increase the amount of people that play Otome games or just visual novels in general, because it just has, I think, like all of the makings to capture an audience. I think that between the music, the art, the premise of the story, and its prestige, where it comes from, and who and who it's made by. I think all of that put together creates a really tantalizing package for people who don't even play visual novels or Tomas. And I think um, that itself gets me really excited for the game. Not to mention as well as I just think the game's going to be like absolutely fantastic. Like, I think it's just going to be a really, really good game. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of, like, you look at that, you look at the box on this one, and I think you have a lot of thumbs up. So as long as Atome games consistently get made in a way that keeps the core audience in mind, we will inevitably and naturally get games like Jacques Jean that are going to, in my opinion, expand the player base. And I know that for a fact because Atome games have grown a lot in the last three years. What I really liked about it is that I, I personally enjoy that on consoles, because this has been a problem for a really long time. There used to be like this big gap between, let's say, indie developed games and like in like double AAA developed games where indie developed games were always 10 to 15 to $20. Double AAA games were always like 50, $60, right? And there was never anything in the middle. Like this game being $30 was like the perfect price point for the game, which I really liked. Um, having a game that is just very simply, like you play a game and you get like a good amount of value on it, but it's not necessarily meant to be played forever. I think that's okay. Oh, hey, speaking of shmups. So we got to release two shmups today, uh, this year, uh, 2022, I should say. Um, but I really liked Miss Kobayashi for multiple reasons. One, I love the anime. Basically, guys who have just, like, been playing and making shmups for a really long time. But the game is super fun. Like, if you like that sort of top-down shmup style that is very arcade -y, 
This is a really good game for that, and it was really fun. Uh, and just like the just like Horgy Hugh, what was double fun about it is that you could choose the amount of difficulty that you put into the game, and you could leave it at like the level of like arcade difficulty, or you can make it easier so that you can progress through the game. And uh, they gave you a lot of options in different ways to get better at the game and stuff like that as well. So uh, I really liked it. It was really fun. Not, it doesn't happen as much anymore, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that it did. So yeah, I really like this game. I think it's still worth your money even today. Uh, very very well polished uh, shmup. Hey, we're playing this game right now. Um, I'll say a little bit since we're just playing it right now. 1926, when, when, I, when, we first, when we first got 1926, my first thought was, man, I'm really happy for all the people who constantly ask me on Twitter if we're getting 1926, <laughs> which I'm not, I'm not getting mad at you guys. In fact, it makes my job easier if you guys at the access channel and say, hey, we want this game, then... You know, I get to say, hey, people want this game. To me, when, when the first thing that happened was, like, when I thought was, man, I'm really happy that all the people who really like P.O. Fiore get to play 1926. So that was my first thought. My second thought afterwards was, I need to play P.O. Fiore. And I played through P.O. Fiore. And now I'm playing through 1926. And I didn't really know what I was going to see out of the sequel. To an Atome, like not a fan disc, but a sequel. Paradigm Paradox, the Pout Simulator Extraordinaire. I don't know. I, d I don't know if I've ever seen. I don't know if I've ever seen a game have that much poutiness in it. I'm. I'm. I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I think that it's absolutely great that most of the characters are just absolutely tired. They're just so sick of what's happening. <laughs> like some of those characters have more have more sad and pouty faces than they do happy faces. And I think that's hilarious. People wanted that non-murdery slice of life real bad. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I wanted it. I just want I just want to tease the ever-loving crap about all my love interests. Like, is that so much to ask? Is that so much to ask really? Do I just I just want to call my love interest an idiot? I've said this before and I'll say it again. Nor 9 is a Atome game that despite how long it's been since its release, I had never had the opportunity to forget about it. I think I made that sound worse than it is. I more mean to say Atome fans consistently talk about Nor 9 to this day even before our announcement of the re-release. And to me, comes two thoughts from that. One, I'm very happy that people who have maybe wanted to play Nor 9 again get the opportunity to do so on a, on a modern console, and it's way easier for them to do so. And two, I'm really excited for people to play the sequel. Yeah, for the play the fan disc. For a lot of those people who played the original Nor 9, who never got the opportunity to play Last Era. Yes, yes, um, sure, if you didn't know, wonderful, amazing human being, Ann Lee, is uh, working with Access Games to not only update the translations from the previous game, but also work on the translations for Last Era. But what's really nice about Ann working on both games is that she will have the ability to keep the tone and style of the translations consistent between both games. So she is basically what she's doing is she's working on Last Era, right? But she lines she's going to line it up with VAR Commons, with the with the the previous game, so that when you go from playing VAR Commons to Last Era, it's gonna feel like it's not gonna feel like it's a hey, this is an eight-year-old game that I'm playing 
and now I'm playing a game that's getting released in 2023. You're going to feel like the game is coming out in 2023, and you're going to get the also the fan disc in 2023 sort of thing. Give me a sales pitch. <laughs> Give me a sales pitch. What do you mean by that? Like, you want me to like, want me to sell you this car, like sell you this car, use sales, just slap the back of this. <laughs> it is, this bad boy holds so many boys. <laughs> Radiant Tail! Um, remember when I told you guys the reason why I liked Variable Barricade? Remember when I told you guys that the reason I was so interested about Variable Barricade is because they introduce all of the love interests and they're all introduced as just like, just trash human beings. They're introduced just like, just as, as, just w like, not good love interests. Yeah, that's why I'm excited for Radiant Tail. <laughs> <laughs> um this one's definitely tied for like i think probably my most excited was jack jean but maybe a little bit more radiant tail because it just kind of it like it fits me you know right it just it just fits me just 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 feed just like feed my soul it really does I kind of, I'm kind of ignoring it, but this is a really cute CG. Liliana, like, you literally rarely get to see Liliana's whole body, which really sucks because the character is, like, super duper pretty, right? Like, this is, like, a, she is an enormously pretty protagonist. Very close to that list of excitement is is Verge. and 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 i really do think that this game is like the other side of the coin right there's radiant tail and then on the other side is is like is Verge evermore i'm really excited for inescapable just because i am i like the premise and and what i've talked to with the um developers they have this like idea of playing a decision-based game based around the idea of decision cost <sighs> i saved the best for last i have talked about it before and we'll, we'll talk about it again at some point i don't like scary things in fact if you look at my interest in atome games I generally walk the other direction. <laughs> I generally go the other way. I want cute and fuzzy. I want adorable and silly. Creepy and bloody, not as much of a fan. Not as much of a fan. However, because Access Games, which is local... <sighs> Access Games localization, which is located in Torrance, California is producing and publishing producing and publishing spirit hunter death mark 2 to be released in 2023 i will eventually have to play death mark 1 <sighs> i would like to say by the way this is not a mark on the game. Actually, I've had one stream with the game. Immediately, I knew this was a good game. Immediately. Because I knew that, like... Because I, I said this, I think, a, a while before. That, like, the one thing that, like, experience is really good at is that if you want something out of a video game, like, let's say for Undernauts, like... JRPG dungeon calling mechanics, you are going to get a amazing set of mechanics and an amazing gameplay experience, which is what Undernauts is. Undernauts is undoubtedly a phenomenal gameplay experience, right? Because they work so hard on that and the aesthetic of the game, experience hits that mark super duper hard. It's the same thing with Deathmark, in my opinion. If you want that style of game, I don't think there's many people who are going to do it better than Experience. Appreciate you guys for coming by. Hey, as uh, as we start 2023, let's just um do our best to play to play the games when we get time. 
and uh, enjoy what's to come. Because I think there's a lot, there's a lot to be excited for. There's a lot to be excited for. And uh, thank you guys for coming by for the first stream of 2023. It was already really good. And it's because of you guys just making, just sitting here and talking to me about video games for two hours. So I hope we get to do it again next week. Take it easy, everybody. If I uh, haven't played a video game yet, go, play, go play some video games. Go play video games. Video games are fun. I like video games. Go play them. They're fun. At least a little bit. Just to enjoy yourself. And I'll see you next week. Take it easy.